Isn't this a masterpiece? This is one of Gallaudet University's landmarks. It was created by renowned American sculptor Daniel Chester French. French also sculpted the famous statue of Abraham Lincoln, found in the Lincoln Memorial. The memorial is located only a few blocks away from here. The statue behind me was unveiled on June 26, 1889. Gallaudet University received it as a gift from the National Association of the Deaf, 1817. Do you know the story of the two figures portrayed in this sculpture? Have you ever wondered how deaf schools in America were founded? I'm Conrad Bayer, and I'm going to tell you their story. Before Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet became the first principal of the first deaf school in America, he was a Yankee boy born in Connecticut. As a young man, Thomas loved to read, despite his weak vision. He also had poor health and a chronic cough. None of this kept him from his studies. One day, his brother Charles invited him to go outside and play. Thomas declined, preferring to study instead. He was preparing to enter Yale College. He took the entrance exam and received the results a few days later. Thanks to his preparation, he was able to skip his freshman year, entering Yale College as a sophomore. Gallaudet studied a variety of subjects, history, Greek, Latin, but his favorite was English writing. Early on, he became involved in debate and was well-versed in a variety of topics. In the fall of 1805, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet received a Bachelor of Arts degree. He graduated with top honors at the age of 17. A few years later, he began working at a law firm in Hartford, Connecticut. In time, the president of Yale College offered Thomas a job as a tutor at Yale. He accepted and began pursuing his master's degree at the same time. After he graduated and received his MA degree, he decided to become a traveling salesman selling his wares around the country. But he soon realized that he could not continue in that career. He changed his path once again and entered Andover Theological Seminary. Here, Gallaudet was once again an excellent student, devoted to biblical history. He also traveled telling stories and preaching the Word of God. However, his health was still an issue and he realized that he wouldn't be able to continue as a traveling preacher. Gallaudet was greatly frustrated that he couldn't find his path. He sat down and prayed to God for guidance. He decided to take a break from the seminary and return to his hometown. He wanted to spend time with his family and allow his health to recover. This trip home helped Thomas discover his pearl.
Who's that girl sitting over there? Her? Yeah, who is that? She's Alice Cogswell, Dr. Coswell's daughter. She lives next door. Well, why doesn't she play with the rest of the group? She can't. She's deaf and dumb. Deaf and dumb? Hmm. Well, maybe there's a game I can play with her. Bring her over here. Hi, Alice. I'm Thomas. Hmm. Uh, this is a hat. Hat? I wonder if she knows any any words. Uh, let's see. H. A. T. Hat. Here, you try. Oh, Lord, how will I ever succeed at teaching this girl? It'll be a miracle if... she ever learns. <gasps> you did it! That was perfect! Hat. Thomas, you're home. Yes, sir. I'm home on break from seminary. How is your health lately? Never better. <coughs> I have something for that cough. You wrote that. You wrote that. You wrote hat. You wrote that. Oh, you wrote that. What's wrong? She wrote hat. No schools in America for deaf children. Indeed. We have deaf children everywhere. None of them receive an education. Which reminds me, there's something I want to show you. This book is from the Royal Institution for the Deaf and Dumb in Paris, written in French by the Abbe Saccard, headmaster of the school. Children in this school converse by using manual alphabet, signs, and gestures. Abbe Saccard said that's the natural language of the deaf. In the book, you'll notice there's lists of signs a sign for a word, much like a dictionary has words for definitions. In the very back is the manual alphabet. You'll notice that the alphabet is formed by using different positions of the fingers of one hand. This is fascinating. Have you, have you tried to teach Alice this? I mean, with this kind of information, the deaf could talk with their hands and spell with their fingers. Yes, but with no more success than we had trying to teach her writing. She imitates our motions, but it means nothing to her. Do you think you can take this book and try its methods? I would love to help her. Thank you.
Thomas and Alice continued to practice their fingerspelling. Thomas also taught Alice to read and write. She learned many new words. As the weeks passed, Thomas regained his health and became stronger and stronger. He returned to the seminary to earn his divinity degree. During this time, Alice learned how to spell her name and continued to improve her reading, writing, and fingerspelling. Dr. Mason Cogswell invited Gallaudet to speak to his wealthy friends about setting up a school for the deaf in America. Dr. Cogswell asked his friends to help him raise funds for the school and send Thomas to Europe to study methods for teaching deaf students and bring those methods back to America. Gallaudet spoke eloquently trying to convince the group to support their endeavor and help raise the funds for a school for the deaf in America and his trip to Europe. At first, the group resisted. They were uncertain that deaf children were able to learn, and they argued their differing opinions and points of view. Thomas described how he taught Alice reading, writing, and fingerspelling to help her communicate. He explained that deaf children can learn. The committee argued and discussed while Dr. Cogswell and Thomas waited for them to make a decision. Finally, the committee approved the funding. Thomas was now ready to go to Europe. He traveled to the New York Wharf to board a boat for his trip. I don't like it at all. Speaking is not natural for the deaf children. Why are they not using signs? A book. A fish. Hello, I'm Thomas Gallaudet from America.
I am pleased to meet you, Monsieur Gallaudet. I am Abbé Sicard, and I present you two of my finest teachers, Laurent Claire and Jean Massieu. What brings you here from America, Monsieur Gallaudet? Well, I'm here to observe and study your school so that we can set up a similar institution in America. Why don't you come to visit our Royal Institute for the Deaf and Dumb in Paris? I would be honored. So the... Let me try. Um... I feel that my gesture has improved since the presentation. We would love to give you a very warm welcome. Thank you, Abbe. Thank you, Laurent. Thank you, Jean. Every day, Thomas observed Laurent Clare and studied his teaching methods, taking page after page of notes. The sheer amount of information was overwhelming, and it seemed impossible to absorb everything so that he could bring it home. He decided to ask Laurent Clare to join him and help him teach in America. Me? Go to America with you? C can you? Mm, my English is not so good. Uh, I'll teach you to write, and you teach me signs. Mm, you need to talk to my supervisor first. We, we will talk about it. Gallaudet wrote a letter to Abbé Sicard asking the Abbé to allow Laurent Clare to join him in America. Abbé Sicard contemplated the request, realizing it would be a difficult decision to make. Laurent Clare was one of his best and most valued teachers. Many students loved Clare. Allowing him to leave was something he'd have to consider seriously. Abbe says yes, I can go to America. You and me will go teach the children. We'll be a great team. Why are you leaving here? I've already decided. I've discussed it with my family. The decision is made. This is your country. America's not your home. This is your home. No, don't pressure me. America's got awful weather. It's humid, it's sticky, disease is rampant. You're 31, you're gonna die in an unknown land. You are 40 years old. The years of your life never change. They're always the same. Yes, I am the same. I teach French deaf and dumb children. I'm proud to be French. I've lived French. I'll die French. What's wrong with you? What about the French Revolution? The French Revolution has nothing to do with America. You betray our French children. I told you, I'll only go to America for three years, that's all. I live for France. I die for France, just like you. Why waste your time in such a young country? Paris is 2,000 years old. America is only 40. Enough of your preaching. I've already decided. I want to help my friend Thomas. This man, he has a wonderful heart. 
he wants to help a little girl named Alice Cogswell. There are many deaf children in America who want an education and we want to help them. But it will be tough. You don't know English. French is your language. He will teach me to write English and I will teach him sign language. That's it. Please let me help Thomas in America. He needs help. Those deaf children in America, they need an education. They need to learn our beautiful sign language. Yes. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Thank you for understanding. I promise you, I will be back in three years. After much deliberation, Abbé Sicard allowed Laurent Clare to go. They agreed to a three-year contract. Gallaudet and Clare set sail for America. Hello, I missed you, Alice. He's deaf, just like you. His name is Laurent. What is your name? Alice. Your sign name is Alice. His is Gallaudet, and mine, Claire. Thomas Gallaudet, Laurent Claire, and Dr. Mason Cogswell searched long and hard for a place to establish their school. They found a building and quickly got it ready for students, painted it, set up classrooms, and prepared sleeping quarters. Gallaudet and Claire visited families with deaf children to tell them a new school for deaf children was opening soon. Claire trained new teachers to prepare them for the students. Dr. Cogswell was very involved in the board and continued fundraising for the new school. Thomas Gallaudet was chosen as the school's first principal. Finally, the American School for the Deaf, ASD, was founded on April 15, 1817.
Are you warm, dear? Yes. I'm gonna go talk with Eddie. About what? About his future. I don't think that he's ready to listen. It's very important. Why is it so important? Can't you see that none of our own children want to help the deaf with their education? Eddie's our last son. Claire and I, we can't keep teaching forever. Eddie, I want to give you that Bible. Thank you, Papa. Have you been considering your professional future? Some. Some. Well, you know that Claire and I have successfully set up several schools for the deaf here in America. But there's still work to do. What needs to be finished? Well, we need to advance their educations, high school and college. Why don't you and Claire continue? We're old and tired, and not to mention my health is declining. I was hoping that you could carry on our work. But Papa, you're a poor man. And I'm going into business and banking and get rich. Go ahead with business if you must, but banking is far too narrow. Have you considered college? College isn't for me. I'm going to work after school. There are other kinds of riches in this world besides gold and silver. Perhaps someday you'll realize that your father was richer than you thought. Do you know about this hat? No. It represents my start in deaf education. Alice was my first deaf student, and her first word was hat. This hat. This hat started it all, and everything grew from there. I want to pass this on to you now. Thank you, Papa. I will cherish this. I wish... No. I pray... That deaf education will never end. Claire taught me how to sign, and we set up deaf schools that I hope will remain forever. Don't forget that you're a wonderful teacher. You taught me how to read and write. I've been very lucky to have you as my husband. I'm going to go talk to Eddie. Mama, I don't mean to disappoint you or Papa. You won't. Do what your heart tells you to do.
Anytime you need help, your father and I are here for you always. Remember that, okay? Today, I'm earning my degree from Gallaudet University. Gallaudet has taught me well and prepared me to become a teacher of these deaf children. They will become teachers, scientists, politicians, actors, writers, anything they want to be. It's important for us to carry on Claire and Gallaudet's legacy of deaf education, ASL preservation, and deaf culture passing them on to future generations. Don't you agree? Our student is now the teacher. He will go on to educate future generations of deaf students. Claire, what do you think of our time spent together here in America? Fantastic! I never dreamed this would happen. I just remember long ago when I was a boy, sitting all day at my desk and studying, until I went off to college and earned my degree. I worked many different jobs. I was a tutor, a lawyer, a salesman, and a minister before I arrived at this position as a teacher for deaf students. And I must say, this last one has been the best. Oh, I agree. And the best part for me? is you invited me to come here to America to teach sign language to our beloved deaf children. You allowed me to help you set up many schools for the deaf across the country. We have taught 41 years, and now our students have grown up to become teachers of the deaf, and they're continuing our effort to spread deaf education across America. What a success.